ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is Nash from Tesla and the Gong. First up, a happy Elon Musk day to all of you. I'm wearing my commemorative t-shirt, the 420 t-shirt, uh, to uh, commemorate this occasion. Um, second, thank you very much to everybody who watched my Tesla ventilator video. The comments that you gave me, very heartening. Thank you very much. The last I checked, it was about 6,500 views. And for a small time channel like me, it is huge. And thank you for that. Now this video is going to be sort of a, a continuation of that video and I have a pulmonologist with me who is here to discuss more about ventilation per se and then we take it from there. Without further ado, I'm really happy to introduce Dr. Abdul Majid Arshad, a pulmonologist from India who is amidst us. Thank you very much for doing this talk. Thank you for uh, putting me in. Now, have you had a chance to look at the Tesla ventilator schematic? Yeah, it's a standard uh, schematic diagram and the only thing is what I see there is uh, filters and uh, the HEPA filter being out and the humidifier being out. Probably those are the outsourced uh, parts of the ventilator. Thank you very much Doc. Actually it is very heartening when you say that it is a standard ventilator. So it is not a shortcut ventilator. It is a standard ventilator which can be used as a, a proper ventilator even in a non-COVID situation, isn't it? Yes. Any, any ventilator requires a lot of R&D and Tesla being a big company, they should do enough R&D before this ventilator comes out. What it means is uh, the proper synchrony between the patient and the ventilator is what needed. So if, it, if you have an asynchronous ventilator, it really is as good as having a no ventilator at all, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. So and that is why R&D is very important and yeah. uh, this goes out to a few of the detractors who keep uh, pounding on Elon saying that what happened to the ventilators? I'm sure Tesla is doing a lot of research. This is a version 6.3. Doc, I have a very important question closely related to ventilators per se. Now, with this rapidly evolving situation with COVID-19, are ventilators that important? Do all patients require ventilation? Who are the patients who require ventilation, Doc? Uh, when it comes to COVID-19, we have these uh, trading of illness such as the mild, severe and the critical illness. And most of these critically ill patients, they do require uh, invasive form of mechanical ventilation and the other ones they will require a non-invasive form of ventilation and when it comes to the non-invasive form of ventilation we have these high flow nasal cannulas and the BiPAPs and the CPAPs and so on. So you think CPAP and BiPAP can also be used on COVID patients? Talk? I think there is a the situation with these aerosol uh, and uh, uh, things like that. What is this story yeah, there? In severe illness when the hypoxia is not so severe well, the, that is the ones who do not require an invasive form of ventilation they can be managed with a non immunized form. Uh, okay. And if, okay. Yeah, and if the healthcare workers are given, they, they take the adequate uh, precautions with the PPE, the personal protective equipment, it shouldn't be a problem. But as you said, the aerosol is a big uh, threat to the healthcare workers and they have to take adequate precautions when they are nebulizing the patients or the, when they are using the NIV, such as the CPAP or the BiPAP, they're going to generate a lot of aerosol, which makes the virus okay. to get transported easily to the, and make a threat to the healthcare workers. Oh, that's great, Doc, because uh, Tesla is getting a lot of grief from these uh, um, uh, people called uh, Tesla, uh, Tesla Q, as they call them. Uh, they're getting them a lot of grief because uh, Tesla delivered CPAP and BiPAP machines initially, and now they're doing testing or doing a standard ventilator. Uh, so it's really heartening to hear that milder cases can be uh, managed with, uh, with, uh, with the regular oxygen machine. support, or maybe with the, if they are a little sicker, they can be managed with a non invasive form of ventilation. So non-invasive non -invasive and invasive forms invasive of ventilation form. are useful in COVID yes. situations also, uh, particularly if the uh, health workers are given personal protective equipment to protect themselves. That's, that's very nice to hear. Thank you very much, Doc. Doc, we understand that the COVID-19 situation is very fluid and things are moving rapidly. We heard about uh, hydroxychloroquine, we heard about BCG being uh, some sort of uh, protective agent for people in the uh, uh, populations who had BCG vaccination or B BCG in the immunization schedules. Uh, then we are hearing about these antiviral drugs. Can you give us uh, uh, some, some insights on those stuff? Yeah, we do have uh, a lot of antiviral drugs which are all based on studies from China. And uh, okay. one drug which is looks look promising for now is this Remdesivir. Uh, okay. And it acts on the RNA transcription uh, process of the virus. Uh, yeah. Stops the RNA transcription. Uh, yes. and, and there was a recent article now by the NAGM uh, and uh, what they found was uh, there was a trial of around 53, 61 patients actually and uh, the, mm -hmm. the 53 patients were fed in the trial 
and, and it showed some promising results in the trial for hypoxic patients. What it means is patients who had a significant amount of respiratory failure with a saturation of less than 94 percent and those okay. patients fared well. Around 68 to 70 percent of the patients came out of the hypoxia and they followed for around 18 days time. And then we had these uh, antiviral drugs, uh, the lopinavir, ritonavir and all these drugs. So the problem is when we give a cocktail of these drugs, there is a lot of side effects also. So it's, it's basically the risk versus benefit ratio to the patient and as well as the case selection of the patient. And uh, we, we had these uh, hydroxychloroquine as well, uh, which, which basically acted on the entry point of the virus. Uh, but again, uh, hydroxychloroquine is going to cause some serious cardiac toxicity. If you're not too cautious about the patient selection, again, we are going to end up in trouble. So it's not about choosing the drug, it's more about tailoring the requirement as per the patient. And that is an important uh, take home message, isn't it? Yeah. You should not be self medicating with these drugs. Never. Leave it to the doctors because they can make the right choice for the patient depending on the patient's uh, uh, general condition and, and uh, his comorbid uh, features. So if he has any pre existing cardiac conditions, they can always tailor the drugs, isn't it? Yes, considering the virus to be more of a self-limiting disease and it's going to affect only the vulnerable population, I don't think it's, it's really a panicky situation for the general population, but always take the advice okay. of the doctor before proceeding with any new medicines especially. So are you saying panic is dumb? No, I'm just joking, Don, because Elon Musk made that, made that tweet and everybody pounced on him and you are using the same word, so it is not a panic situation. Thank you. Uh, it's not, I wouldn't say it's not completely a no panic situation. But the thing okay. is, we have to uh, protect our vulnerable population. The vulnerable okay. population whom I mean is the elderly population with comorbids like your diabetes, hypertension, your lung transplant patients, your chronic kidney disease patients. All these are vulnerable groups. And if you're going to be selfish and not bother about this vulnerable group, we're going to lose all of them. For youngsters, maybe yes. Okay, okay. But we do hear that few youngsters have also have succumbed. Also okay. Since we don't know the, the pathogenesis of the disease completely yet, we don't know who is vulnerable to the disease. True. And the viral load also. Means yeah, the viral load matters. Viral load. Yeah. Now, uh, we all know that uh, radiology also plays a great role uh, in, uh, in COVID-19. Uh, recent uh, studies have uh, started talking about uh, radiology being an early detector, CT scans being early de detectors of pneumonia, uh, or because the PCR tests are only really 70% positive. And we've seen patients who had double PCR negative uh, but then they still uh, went on to have COVID and uh, their CT scans had showed earlier changes. That's a very uh, interesting finding and for me, uh, that's an interesting uh, thing to, to, to look at. Now, um, the next question I had was, with regards to COVID, but a slightly different take on that. We know that COVID is pandemic right now, but WHO had warned us earlier that there's a high chance of these COVID situations becoming an endemic and it can remain in our, uh, in our midst for, for years together. And the, and the allied question there is, when it becomes an endemic, people with the history of cigarette smoking and for people who have exposure to uh, uh, fuel uh, smokes and particulate matter, does COVID pose a bigger threat or what do you think? Yes, it's, it's going to be a very difficult task to eradicate the virus as such. Um, mm -hmm. India has really fared well when it, became, when it comes to two major diseases, as you all know, uh, polio mm -hmm. and the smallpox. And WHO had also appreciated regarding that. The problem with these viruses, they can have uh, a lot of uh, changes when they pass on from one human to the other. The, the influence of viruses, we have virus, we know that they can have an antigenic shift and the antigenic drift. So okay. that is the reason we prepare vaccine every year. The flu vaccine keeps changing, the strain keeps changing every year. So we need to wait That's and watch when it comes to the coronavirus whether we, we can really develop a good vaccine which is going to give good amount okay. of protection especially and uh, uh -huh. so yeah we have to learn to live with the virus so what are the things we are going to do to learn to live with the virus uh, probably okay. leading a healthy lifestyle as you said uh, avoid smoking for the, for the present smokers to ask them to avoid smoking and uh, care okay. about the environment as well the automobile industry okay. and all these fuel based automobile industry to change to the electric uh, cars and all these steps which have already been suggested by the government has to be strictly enforced henceforth in order to protect the vulnerable groups. That is, when, when it comes to the vulnerable group and when it comes to the respiratory cases, we can point out the asthma, the COPD cases and the lung cancer patients and all these patients who are going to succumb easily. And okay. also we have these cardiac patients and so on. 
It's, it is amazing, isn't it? And today, of all days, we see that oil prices have gone into the negative. Yeah, today also happens to be Elon Musk Day, so we are a little a double happy for that one. Um, so the next uh, uh, step, Doc. So, um, what do you think is the next step for for India? I just want to touch upon the Indian scenario right now, uh, and we hear very heartening things about India and how the uh, lockdown situation has worked very well. Uh, we sort of uh, uh, mirrored that with the Aus Australian scenario as well. We have done quite well. The, the, we have really flattened the curve quite a bit. And we're really, very happy uh, with all Australians for coming together in, uh, in keeping the social distancing and following all the norms set by the government. So talk about the Indian scenario, Doc, with uh, COVID-19. Uh, India has done really well so far. The Indians are known to have this conservative lifestyle. So when it, came, okay. when it comes to the disease, we, we went for the conservative strategy as well. We wanted to prevent Great. first rather than treat the cases. That is what we followed uh -huh. here. And then we had a strict protocol in you know, social distancing, isolation and all these things. And we have okay. a, quite a lot of designated COVID hospitals. And that was a very good step from the Indian perspective. We didn't allow cross-infections to other patients by, by admitting to all the hospitals. Uh, mm -hmm. Like how the mistakes were made in Italy and so on. So in that way, we are we are doing uh, well so far, uh, and mm. and the lockdown has worked uh, really well as well. We are really doing well. Thanks. Same here with, in Australia as well. We are very um, uh, cautiously optimistic, to be honest. Yes. If I can go into the current status, um, since 3 p.m. yesterday, we only had 26 new cases in all of Australia. That's very wonderful. heartening numbers. Yeah, and and our numbers uh, at this time of re recording is six thousand six hundred and forty-five cases. Uh, Canada and Australia had uh, four thousand cases at about the same time, and Canada has uh, has exponentially more cases than Australia, so we're really doing well. So we are cautiously optimistic. We really hope that the uh, social distancing measures are kept in place for some more time and and slowly eased and not completely opened up. Uh, because we're looking at Singapore and uh, how they were doing well in, in the beginning and now they're having a spate of cases. So we're still uh, cautiously optimistic, Tom. Now, if there was one thing that you would tell Tesla, what would you want to say? Uh, what what you want them to do now in this current scenario? Uh, they, are, they are now going to definitely going to release a ventilator. They have already done a lot of uh, purchasing of existing CPAP and BiPAP machines which have been given to the hospitals, which have been converted into invasive ventilators also. They have done some reverse engineering and they've done uh, some, uh, you know, uh, they converted them into invasive ventilators. So what would you want uh, a company like Tesla to do? I think just restricting to ventilators alone would not uh, do. Uh, that's the te technological perspective. What, what about the healthcare workers? We are getting a lot of news that healthcare workers are being affected more these mm -hmm. days. And more than 100 healthcare workers died in, uh, in Italy and we saw around uh, more than uh, okay. 10 deaths in uh, UK and so on in US as well. I think uh, they should concentrate more on these uh, personal protective equipment manufacturing as well. Uh, okay. any, any big uh, company for that matter should come forward to uh, mass production of these personal protective equipment like masks and the hazmat suits and so on in a more economical manner, in a more affordable manner for the future. I think the, the future of clinical practices is going to be with the personal protective equipment until this pandemic settles. Right. That's a great, 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 and some of the tweets that Elon Musk had, had uh, sent out. I thank you very much and I wish you a happy, happy Elon Musk day. 420 funding is secured. This is Tesla and the Gong signing off. Peace.